Hey guys, this is Agent Lozen. Today, I'm bringing you the winning tips and tricks to Sonic the Hedgehog on Sega Genesis. If you want to raise your high score, beat your friends, or take your game to the next level, then you've come to the right place. What do you get when you take one blue hedgehog, some animal-powered robots, a couple diversely themed stages, a bunch of rings, and a mad scientist, and put them all in a blender? Sonic the Hedgehog, of course. Sonic's forest pals have been enslaved by the evil Dr. Robotnik, and it's up to Sonic to rescue them. Sonic begins his adventure in the Green Hill Zone. As Sonic sprints through the zone, free your friends by jumping on enemy robots with either the A, B, or C buttons. Robot enemies aren't defenseless. A single attack can kill Sonic if you're not cautious. Collecting rings allows Sonic to withstand attacks, but when you're hit, you'll lose all the rings you're holding. There are all manner of helpful objects laying around Sonic's world. Springs can boost Sonic to unreachable places, and lampposts serve as checkpoints. Should you die, you'll return to the last lamppost you passed. Monitors contain all sorts of helpful items for Sonic. Break them open by jumping on them. Complete an act by running through the signpost at the end of the level. Every zone in Sonic the Hedgehog contains three acts, with a third act ending in an encounter with Dr. Robotnik. Another way Sonic can defend himself is by rolling through enemies. Press down when Sonic has built running momentum to cause him to roll into a spiny ball and slice through foes. Sonic's spines are even durable enough to cut through some walls this way. On occasion, Sonic will have to run through a loop-de-loop. -loop. If you're afraid of roller coasters that go upside down like I am, you might want to find another way around. Sonic's favorite activity is going fast, but it usually gets him into trouble. It's not uncommon to accidentally run into a trap, so Sonic is better off taking his time and proceeding cautiously. If you want to see the end of Sonic the Hedgehog, you'll need to stockpile extra lives to give you more chances to complete the game. One way to earn an extra life is to find one in a monitor, like the one in a loop-de-loop -loop in Green Hill Zone Act 2. The second method of earning lives is to collect 100 rings in any act. If you proceed carefully, it's easy to find this many in the game's early stages. Even after you've earned the 100 ring life, it pays to hold on to them. When Sonic reaches the signpost at the end of the act, he'll be presented with a big ring if he's holding 50 or more. Jumping through the big ring takes Sonic to a bonus stage where he's given a chance to find a Chaos Emerald. While you're here, if Sonic can collect 50 rings, he'll be given a continue that gives Sonic an extra chance even after he's lost all of his lives. Ironically, the continue is more valuable than the Chaos Emerald. Completing a course in Sonic the Hedgehog is a simple matter of moving forward while avoiding obstacles. However, most levels have branching paths for Sonic to explore, and some are better than others. In Act 1 of Green Hill Zone, take the lower path at this yellow spring to find several ring monitors. In Act 2, leap over these spikes at the beginning to find several item monitors. If you follow this way long enough, you'll be led to the Act's free life monitor. Finally, in Act 3, Sonic can crash through this wall early in. Follow the path and avoid the traps until you discover this yellow spring followed by a spike trap. If you're brave enough, you can leap over the spikes to reveal a hidden area complete with rings and a free life. At the end of Green Hill Zone Act 3, the good doctor will personally try and stop Sonic. In this fight, Robotnik swings a wrecking ball from his flying pod. Hide in the corners to avoid the wrecking ball, and smash into Robotnik when there's an opening. Every encounter with Robotnik will end when he's taken 8 hits from Sonic. Count the hits in your head to give Sonic a strategic advantage. New, more dangerous obstacles await Sonic in the Marble Zone. 
The scenic waterfalls from Green Hill Zone have been replaced with lava pools, and cute crab robots have been swapped for thorny caterpillars. Just like before, progress through the stages very carefully, and always be on the lookout for traps. Roll through caterpillars, or jump on their heads to avoid their spiky bodies. Unlike many other areas in Sonic the Hedgehog, Marble Zone is fairly linear and involves a lot of platforming. Be patient as you crawl through this lava-filled dungeon. Your friends are going to think you're so rad when you show them your sick score with this trick. The Marble Zone plays host to several hidden life monitors throughout its acts. Late in Act 1, use this falling spike trap to boost Sonic into a hidden room full of rings and a life. In Act 2, cross this lava lake by pushing the stone block into the lava. At the end, leap forward through the wall to find another life monitor. Look for these two pokey chandeliers halfway through Act 3. If you cross over them through the wall, you'll discover Marble Zone's third hidden life monitor. When Dr. Robotnik finally builds up the courage to face Sonic again, you can use these tricks to mercilessly destroy him. Hit him just as the fight starts by standing on the right platform and attacking as he appears. After 2-3 attacks, leap into the adjacent platform across the lava pool to avoid his fireballs. Repeat. With a little work, you'll get good enough to instill Robotnik with a self-image disorder for years to come. Sonic has only just begun his journey. He has yet to face annoying springs, annoying labyrinths, and annoying drowning. Practice all the strategies we've looked at in this video. I really mean it. The more familiar you are with this game, the easier it is to beat. Stockpile lives and continues early and it gives Sonic a fighting chance at beating Dr. Robotnik and crushing his self-confidence forever. Many fans have written me asking when I'm going to cover modern games like Ocarina of Time or Final Fantasy VII. The truth is, is that these new controllers have too many buttons on them and I can't make heads or tails out of them. For now, I just plan to stick with classic titles. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.